I'm Douglas Worthen from Southern Illinois University, Carbondale. This work on page 51 is by Gaspar Kummer, who dates from 1795 to 1870. Like the other etude for this audition, it too is in brilliant style. However, Kummer is better known for his beautiful and long melodies. He's becoming much more in fashion these days, and a number of his works are being uh, performed as well as recorded. And his melodic cantabile style is in evidence in the second half of this etude. I'll play all the way through the piece first, and then we'll come back and mention some specific details that you might work on to enhance your audition. for a couple of thoughts and pointers on this particular piece. In the second measure, notice that that phrase ends with a sforzando in a very high note. Let that high A flat resonate and sing out rather than be clipped. Enjoy it. And then the fourth measure of the phrase does a little something different. We start piano, but we come back to piano. So the combination that allows us to have a little bit of difference in texture for each one of these phrases, and we'll be listening for that on your audition. Of course, the piece is marked allegro non tanto. What does that really mean? Every Italian word that you ever see on a piece of music is something you should look up and be firm in your understanding of in its definition. Allegro non tanto means don't play this terribly fast. Take your time. Let it swing along. Doesn't this piece remind you of a waltz? Kind of swings along. So that gives you a sense of tempo. In the cantabile, we have sort of an interesting note. It's the third measure of the cantabile. We have a grace note, what looks like a grace note, but it's written as a half note, D natural to the E flat. Be sure you play that entirely two beats. It sounds just lovely, and it's in an earlier performance tradition. If I played it quickly, It disturbs the overall flow of the piece and doesn't feel like a cantabile part. 
Another question that many of my students ask is, how do I do an accent in piano uh, written in the fourth line, the uh, fifth measure, that B flat? How do I do that? Well, I have to keep it very, very bright, put a little bit of vibrato spin on it, and then back off of it so it doesn't seem like an explosion. That sense that gives us a little bit of a poke, a little bit of interest at that particular moment. Of course, we have two bars rest marked in this piece that's written for solo flute. Why do you suppose he did that? He wanted a measured and exciting silence that sets up anticipation and even maybe a little anxiety with the listener about what's going to happen next. That happens here. Notice how I could spoil that effect if I move during those two bars or if I have a sense that I give up on my flute playing for just a couple of moments. And that would sound like this. As if I really didn't know whether the piece was going on myself. Remember, I'm here to surprise the listener, not to be surprised myself as the performer. Well, I hope you people have a good time preparing these two excerpts. I think there's a lot in them for you to use. And remember when you're performing for us that what you're doing is displaying all of the things that you can do rather than worrying about the things that you feel you can't do. Keep practicing these things and you'll find that they'll be really worthwhile to you for the rest of your life as you practice your instrument. Good luck in your audition.